everyone, today is a crazy weird and awesome episode of Biologic Science News. If you follow NASA's Twitter or their news feed, or really any astronomy organization or uh, any group that follows space news, you've probably heard of the strange object called Oumuamua that's floating through our solar system. This object is strange for a lot of reasons. It's just the most unreal thing we've ever discovered in space. To summarize, let me start at the beginning, when Oumuamua was first discovered. On October 19, 2017, at the Haleakala Observatory in Hawaii, Robert Wierek discovered the object. He first saw it when it was about 33 million kilometers away from the Earth, on a trajectory taking it out of the solar system. Other research teams, using the Keck 2 telescope in Hawaii, as well as the Gemini South Telescope and the so-called Very Large Telescope in Chile, all conducted further analysis that discovered the object's path through our solar system. While moving at nearly 60,000 miles per hour relative to the sun, or about 26 kilometers a second, it had descended nearly perpendicularly into the plane of our solar system, sometime around August. It dipped in between the sun and the orbit of Mercury in early September, and during the rest of the month, its trajectory was bent almost 90 degrees to the right by the intense gravity of our sun. By October, it was passing Earth on its way farther out, deeper into the solar system, and also up and away out of the plane of the solar system. By November, when all of the data was accumulated and analyzed, it was realized that this was the first known object from interstellar space to come into our solar system, and Robert Wierick had discovered it as it was leaving, as it, uh, as it was on its way out, with the sun to its back. Inspection of the object itself was paradigm-changing. Unlike any other natural object we've ever seen before in space, Oumuamua appeared to be a long cylindrical rock with tapered ends, about 100 feet wide and 10 times as long as it is wide. Scientists are really puzzled about this. They don't know how something with this shape could have formed, or why it's moving the way it is. Instead of spiraling along its trajectory, kind of like a football, and this is how a lot of things tend to travel through space, Oumuamua is tumbling end over end, making one revolution about roughly every uh, 7 hours and 20 minutes. All of this is really weird, but there's more. At first it was thought that Oumuamua would be covered in ice, as it might be deep frozen from spending potentially millions of years in deep space. When icy objects fly past stars, uh, the light and the heat from the stars will warm them and the ice will melt. It'll fragment off of the object and this will create a trail of ice and dust behind the object as it's floating through space. This is what creates uh, the trail of a comet. When you look at a comet and you see this big, beautiful blue tail streaking up behind it, that's uh, this big cloud of dust and debris that's flaking off and catching the sunlight and reflecting it into your eye. But the thing is that with Oumuamua, there is no trail of ice. It doesn't appear to be altered by the light of our sun. Now this is where it gets really crazy, because scientists wanted to know, why? Why is this? It, surely it's not solid rock all the way through. There has to be some ice here, right? Well, the latest research with radio telescopes and spectroscopes discovered that Oumuamua might still potentially have ice despite not showing signs of melting. They can't rule out ice as being non-existent. You know, it could still be there. And the reason they think that it's still there is because Oumuamua appears to be coated in a layer of biomolecules. This is described as an organic shield that coats the entire object. It would insulate any ice within the object and protect it from melting. The conclusions of the research are really thought-provoking. In the study, the authors say, and I quote, We report spectroscopic characterization of a muamua, finding it to be variable with time, but similar to organically rich surfaces found in the outer solar system. We show that this is consistent with predictions of an insulating mantle produced by long-term cosmic ray exposure. End quote. What they mean when they say that its, uh, its spectroscopic characterization is variable with time is that it, because it's tumbling end over end, when you're looking at it at certain angles as it's moving, you're going to get uh, a different kinds of reflection that are going to reflect you know, different colors or different magnitudes of light. It's not going to be just one static, consistent data input. 
<clears throat> but besides that, um, the more interesting thing, the more uh, thought-provoking thing here, is that they're saying that when uh, Oumuamua traveled through deep space, it was basically exposed to the ionizing radiation of cosmic rays that would otherwise be blocked by the sun's magnetosphere. This long-term exposure to all this ionizing cosmic radiation created a chemical reaction on the outer layers of ice and rock, wherein a crust of organic material formed and enveloped the ice rock mass. The researchers say that this is similar to the organically rich surfaces that we see on asteroids in the outer solar system, but this shows that uh, the same reaction, the same kind of phenomenon, can occur on interstellar objects traveling between star systems. To get straight to the point, this gives a lot of credibility to the idea of panspermia, because this is pretty much uh, not really living, but organic evidence that the seeds of organic biochemistry can be generated in deep space, and that they can be transferred between star systems, which means that they can potentially seed planets with life. Oh,